Welcome to my latest rail journey, and this time I'm going to the summit of Snowdon on the Snowdonia Railway. While we're on this journey, we'll take a look at its history. We'll also have a look at how the railway actually works. And of course, we'll look at some of the fantastic scenery, which we'll have a look at on the way down. Let's take a start by looking at where Snowdon actually is. And if we look at the map here of North Wales, we can see Anglesey there in the middle of the camera. And if we come south of that to where my finger is, you can see Snowdon here. And if we go north of that, we can see Lamberis. And that's the starting point of the line, this is the main station. And the line goes in a rough southerly direction up to the summit of Snowdon there. Well, if we look at this very basic uh, station map of the line, we can see we've got Lamberis here. And it goes roughly, after a bit of a curve, in a roughly south to south east direction. There are several stations on the way, as you can see and eventually climbs up the summit. It takes, well I say an hour, but it's about 50 minutes to the summit. Well the journey of course starts here at Lamberis and we're going to get to the top and I'm going to start my review of this line from the summit. Well this is the train that's brought us to the top of Snowdon. Here is a spectacular view that you've got from up here. We're very lucky today that it's a beautiful day and we can see right out into the sea. And in the distance there we can see the Menai Straits and right into Anglesey. And then the coastline going south. Well we've just taken the hour journey up from Lambaris and we're now at the uh, summit. Probably nothing typifies the Victorian period as much as this railway. Uh, the quest to go where no man has gone before really drove the Victorian engineers at the time. They never seemed to be happier unless they were given a huge challenge building vast viaducts, aqueducts, tunnels, and in this case, a railway up a mountain that no one thought you could do. So how do you get a train up a mountain? Well, you can't just go up a normal rail track, the gradient's just simply too steep. So this line uses an ingenious rack and pinion system, which gives you this extra rail, this tooth rail, coming up in the middle. And the pinions are the cogs which go on the axles, and they fit onto the tooth rail in the middle, and this helps with the traction pulling upwards. But also, crucially, it helps with the braking going downwards. You'll notice that the tooths are one gap apart, and this also is a safety factor helping with the braking as it goes down because the line is quite steep in places. While we're enjoying the amazing scenery as we come down the mountain, let's just have a think about some of the history of the line. The line itself opened in 1896, but plans have been afoot for quite some time before then. 
Particularly initially, there was a plan to build a line from Port Maddock up to the top of the Snowdon, but this saw profits in businesses in Lamberis suffer. And so uh, Sir Richard Moon, who really was the sort of godfather of the Lamberis to Snowdon Railway, put proposals forward. And eventually, uh, after lots of debate in Parliament, the line started construction in about 1894. And here we see some of the builders on the line on some of the viaducts that were built. Here is that same train and some of the workers and some of the more business-like owners probably. It's likely that this picture was taken on the opening day, which is actually Easter Monday, 1896. This picture shows a train leaving Lamberis in that same year, 1896. And here are some of the workers on that very same day, next to the railway offices. This picture shows the halfway house station in the 1920s. This picture dates back to 1898 and shows one of the carriages which was converted. They wanted one open top carriage and this was it. Here we see a train leaving Lamberis station in the early 1930s. This picture is of the summit and it dates from the 1950s and it shows the original building which was constructed at the top. Interestingly you can see everyone lined up next to the building which rather suggests they knew they were being photographed. In this undated picture we can see a train either just arriving or just leaving that original summit building. This last picture though is right up to date and we can see the modern building which opened in 2009.
office back at Lambert Station makes a note that the construction of the railway commenced on the 15th of December 1894. And the first public passenger train which ran to the summit was on the 6th of April 1896. They've got a little museum here and we can see clearly the rack and pinion in this axle here. I mentioned the axle on the trains and this would be on two of each carriage. We can see how the cogs work on the rack and pinion, which gives it that extra drive up the mountain. But of course, most importantly, it acts as a brake on the way down. We can also see how here how the, the twos are actually split one tooth apart, and that gives it its extra safety, particularly if there's a problem with the engine and the brakes themselves. We've got a picture here of the present summit building, which was actually only opened as recently as 2009 and you can see how close to the summit it is. Well done the Victorians for having the courage to build a railway at such a steep, steep mountain as such as Snowdon. And most importantly having the means, the know-how and the sheer drive to actually get the project completed. As a review I'd certainly give it 10 out of 10 and I think it's worth coming to visit whether you've got an interest in railways or not. As for some of the uh, other reviews which I have read on the internet about it, uh, such as uh, poor visibility and uncomfortable trains, well I think that's nonsense. I think uh, the experience was absolutely fantastic and the amount that it costs, well that's vital for keeping a railway such as this going for the future.